I'm Noreen and welcome to my kitchen and today I'm going to be making some of these beautiful Easter treats for you. How many of you are my age and you remember Russell Stover's when you were a kid making little chocolate coconut bird's nests? I remember them and they're a super happy memory. Today we're going to make some of those and we're going to make the green ones with the white chocolate and we're going to make the traditional chocolate ones and um, they're super easy. You're not even going to believe how simple they are. So let's go see how we make these chocolate coconut bird's nests. Okay, we're going to go over the ingredients. I'm going to actually be making two different kinds of the chocolate coconut bird's nests and they're really simple. This is so simple. I have a bag. This is a 12 ounce bag of Ghirardelli white chocolate chips and two teaspoons of coconut oil. And this here is a 12 ounce bag of Ghirardelli semi-sweet chips and two teaspoons of coconut oil. I have one cup of coconut that I have not colored and one cup of coconut that I have colored. In another video, you'll see me do that. And I just have a bag of assorted jelly beans. <laughs> and I have some edible glitter. This is totally optional. I just had it in my stash and I thought it might be cute. This is as simple as it gets. You may choose to melt your chocolate over a double boiler. I am choosing to melt my chocolate in the microwave. So go ahead and put that coconut oil right in the chocolate and that's there's going to serve two purposes it's going to help to thin out the chocolate just a little and then when it sets up it's going to help the uh the chocolate to set up a little bit quicker i'm going to go melt these in the microwave 30 second bursts stirring after each time until we reach the proper consistency so i'll be back when that's time okay our chocolate is melted and i wanted to just mention briefly um when you melt the chocolate it has been my experience that white chocolate is very, very fussy, and depending on the content of the cocoa butter in there and how old it was when you bought it, or if in my case you've had these cho white chocolate chips sitting in your pantry for about six months maybe, because I think I bought these like in October before the holiday baking season, um, it may or may not take more coconut oil than I have recommended. For instance, this white chocolate, um, it took me longer to heat it up it took about two minutes and 30 seconds in 30 second bursts and I actually ended up adding about two tablespoons of coconut oil to this to get the um, the, the chocolate melted properly and to the you know the right consistency and there are a little bit of lumps but this also stays very warm for a very long time so you just need to keep stirring it for our application today I'm not going to worry about those little lumps because it's not really a big deal but if you were using this for something else I would recommend that you hit it another 30 second burst or maybe even 20 seconds on 40 percent power you don't want to burn the white chocolate it's very very fussy just add a little more coconut oil from time to time if you think you need it until it starts to come together and it's nice and smooth. The regular chocolate, the semi-sweet chocolate, conversely, I put in the microwave for one minute with the two teaspoons of coconut oil and this is what happened after the first heating. It came out perfect. Now it may still look like it's solid but once you start to stir it it's going to start to come together and smooth out nicely. So there are two different animals and you just need to be very aware of that. And I use organic coconut oil. <clears throat> this is just a local store brand. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add my coconut in here. And the reason I have dyed my coconut is because I can't dye my chocolate. You can add color to chocolate, but it has to be candy making color and it has to be an oil base. It is my hope that using the coloring process that I use, this will help to tint the chocolate in a way that I'm anticipating. And it looks like I'm going to be successful. Mm -hmm. You never want to add water mm -hmm. to melted chocolate because it will help it, it will make it seize up for one thing. And this is exactly how I want it to look. So now I'm going to go get my pan and my scoop and we're going to start making bird nests. Okay, now I have a scoop that is about two tablespoons in size and I did a test over there in the corner because I wasn't sure which scoop size I needed. And then I also have one of these scoops, okay? This is just like a regular ice cream scoop. And this is to help me make that divot. You may need to run this under some hot water, but I don't recommend it. 
you may just have to, you know, wipe it clean. And then we just do dot, dot, dot. Now I'm going to continue to do these green ones, and then we'll be back and we'll do the chocolate chocolate ones. All right, I got those green um, coconut nests all done, and now I'm mixing together just the chocolate and the regular chocolate, semi-sweet chocolate. I'll get that right soon. And the coconut. Now, um, this is a little bit on the looser side, and it's because there was no food dye in it, okay? The food dye had an effect on the thickness of the white chocolate. So, because this is of normal consistency, I did add an additional half cup or so of chocolate until I reached the right thickness. So, I'm going to do the same thing I did before. And I'm going to create bird's nests out of these, and I'll be back when those are all ready, and I'll show you what they look like. Okay, we've got all of our bird's nests finished. Now we have to let them set. You have two ways of doing this. You can stick them in the fridge. You can stick them uh, off in a cool spot in your kitchen. I am going to give these a little bit of edible glitter just because I think it's fun. There we go. We're going to stick these in the fridge. I'll be back when it's time just to show you what they look like all finished. Homemade chocolate coconut bird's nests just like I remember from when I was a kid. These turn out so nice. These would be perfect in an Easter basket. You could individually wrap these in little plastic treat bags and give them away. You can arrange them in a basket or in a box with uh, cupcake liners like I have here. This just makes it a little bit easier to serve. And if you want to store these like in a flat uh, airtight container, just put each one in a cupcake liner and then you can stack them and it's not going to be a problem. I would recommend, if you live in a warm area, I would recommend keeping these in your refrigerator. I'm going to be keeping these in the refrigerator just because I want them to last a little bit longer and I don't want them to get too soft. Um, and if you're going to be taking them to an outside event, I definitely think you should keep them in the ice chest in the plastic container. So there you have it, chocolate coconut bird's nest. I hope you give these a try and I hope that you love them. And until next time, happy Easter. My kitchen today, I hope you like what you watched today and I hope that you try it and I hope that you love it. Uh, if you like what you saw, please consider hitting the thumbs up button and giving me a positive rating. And also, make sure that you hit the subscribe button if you're already not a subscriber so that you don't miss out on any of the fun we have here in our kitchen every single day. I hope that you enjoyed it. I'm really glad that you're here. Thank you for stopping by. Don't forget to come by tomorrow. Until next time, 